Hey guys, Darkster here with my review of Duelist. I've been working on this one for quite a while. Uh, discovered it out of nowhere and it's just been kind of a crazy situation just kind of getting it all together and getting my head wrapped around it and getting all the footage and making sure it's good footage and not just me getting pooped on by like some kid in Florida. Oh my god, I get, oh, I get owned so much in this game. I hate it. I mean, I love it, but uh, whatever. We'll talk about that. We'll get to the points and the details. Let's get on with the review. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, it's probably going to be a long one, so I understand if you can't, you know, stick through it all. There's really no reason to actually look at the screen. Perfectly fine. You can just minimize it and just listen. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys watch the whole thing and or listen to the whole thing, whatever. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Please subscribe, rate, and comment. Let's get on with the video. So the lore or story or whatever you want to call it when it comes to Duelist, you have to understand that it is a collectible card game. It is a CCG at the end of the day, so their priorities are kind of more on gameplay and design and balancing and like UI improvements, especially for Duelist who is still very young as a game. They did really try to get out uh, a, a very elaborate story, or at least a story that has a foundation for a lot of additions in the future. But you have to be aware that they did kind of set it up around this whole aspect of, hey, we're kind of focused more on the actual cards and the gameplay and stuff right now. But I'm going to tell you guys what I know so far about the story, just kind of give you guys a bit of a summary. I think you'll be interested in what they have to offer. So basically, there are these continents, and each of the continents are represented by a faction. Uh, how many factions are there? There's the Liner, the Vitruvian, the Magmar, the Vanar, uh, Songhai, Abyssin, and Neutral. Is Neutral its own? Yeah, Neutral. That has to be the last faction. So there's six factions. And basically, those factions are represented within their individual continents. They all have their own continent that they're like, hey, this is ours, you know, this is our place. And the power of the individual nations, I don't think, vary based on the size of the continent. I believe the Liner have the largest continent, and I think the Abyssians have the smallest continent, but it doesn't really mean anything. These factions are all separate, and they're kind of doing their own thing. And just like almost our IRL real-world problems and stuff, uh, they are in need of their resources. And in this, in the world of Duelist, those are power cores, or I believe they're just cores. Power cores, cores, whatever. In, in real-world terms, think about energy or oil or something like that. And they want it, and all the nations, all the factions, they want it. They want the same thing. There's a limited amount of this stuff, and they have to kind of distribute it accordingly. Well, how do you distribute it accordingly without just starting a full-on war with each other? Well, what they do is they pick uh, champions. They choose champions to represent themselves or represent the faction. And they enter into trials and tournaments, so on and so forth, as representations of the factions. And the winners of these tournaments and trials and all that, they're the ones who get the, the whatever the resources for their for their nation. And that's who the generals are that you see in the game currently and it actually gives you a lot of room to expand on other generals because there's nothing that says there can only be one general per faction there, there can be multiple generals which they've shown they teased it on twitter and i believe on facebook and such that there are alternate generals that you can pick for the factions which makes a lot of sense because there's again no reason that you can't have multiple uh representatives for the factions uh how are these generals picked they're picked from birth and they're considered the Bloodborne, I believe is the term. They're basically chosen to be generals of the faction from the moment they're born. And it's like a great privilege and all that. And that's basically the story. And that's why we're fighting. That's why we as players, we represent these generals pretty much when we play them. And we're the ones that are kind of trying to get this resource for our factions. I like it. I enjoy the story. For sure, there's lots of room here to expand on. They can go so far with the story. Each individual general can have their own history and upbringing and all that, which would be really cool to see. Hopefully, they do expand upon this stuff in the future. I can't wait to see it. Uh, but so far, pretty good. 
Now let's talk about the art style of Duelist, and this is actually the thing that got me to play the game in the first place, was literally the art style. When I saw it on Twitch, randomly scrolling around, I originally I found it randomly uh, about two times before I actually clicked on the Twitch stream, and I was like, what the heck is this? It had a cool picture, but the first two times I was, I was looking for something in particular, and I kind of just skipped over it. But the third time where I actually decided to actually click on um, Duelist and see what it was about, I was, I was just randomly browsing and the art style kind of, I, I saw it again, just the picture, just the square picture on Twitch. And I clicked on that and I took a look at the game being played and I quickly searched it also. Right away I quickly searched it just to look at pictures. And it was the art style that hooked me instantly because it's very distinct, very pretty, very distinct art style with this whole high contrast painted look to it. And if you look at a lot of their background images and, and stuff and their character designs, it's a very different art style to what you're generally used to. Uh, a lot of bright colors on top of bright backgrounds and they and it all just kind of contrasts and pushes each different element out in a different way where you don't really see that too much. And, and this distinct art style is extremely important to differentiate your game among everything else. Aside from the game itself, aside from Duelist itself being a very different game when it kind of comes down to um, the overall gameplay, it's also very different when it comes to this art style and the graphic style of the game because the reason that a game like Halo is so recognizable, the reason that World of Warcraft is so distinct and even Hearthstone to an extent is so distinct is because if I were to see like a battle rifle from Halo outside just randomly like on a wall, like a picture on a wall, I'd know instantly that was the battle rifle because I've seen it so much because it's so recognizable to me like even the, the, the for instance the sniper rifle from Halo is very distinct to the Halo universe like there's other sniper rifles and it looks very similar to a lot of other sniper rifles but I know the Halo sniper rifle when I see the Halo sniper rifle I know that's the Halo sniper rifle the same way when I see a piece of gear from World of Warcraft show me a shoulder piece from World of Warcraft, a glove piece, whatever it may be, I'll know instantly that's from World of Warcraft because it's very distinct to that game and that universe. And that's what Duelist has done with their art style. They have created this thing that is distinct to them. That is that is their art style. When I see something now from, from Duelist out in the world, I'll know instantly that that's from Duelist or that's very similar to Duelist. When it comes to just a picture of the art, when it comes to a character, even when it comes to their kind of 8-bit sprite, you know, play character thing, you know, like their, their overall player pieces. Like, if I see that, I'll know that's very similar to Duelist or that's from Duelist. I'll recognize it. And that's very important when it goes to kind of branding the game, getting the game out, getting its, its whole recognizability out so people see it and they know, hey, that's, that's that game. That's that game with the thing and the pieces and the fighting. And that's super important when it comes to getting a game recognized and getting it out there. And, and aside from that, graphically, very pretty game. Being able to run on also uh, just browser, nice. Nice stuff. Eventually when they get it to Android and iOS and stuff, which I think they have to do at this point, I think it's almost mandatory. Uh, I think it should be one of their main priorities. Um, once they get that all together, oh man, this game, I, I think it's gonna be a very cool game. The gameplay of Duelist is what heavily differentiates it from its competition. At its foundation, the game is very much a collectible card game along the lines of Hearthstone. Very similar, actually. Uh, a lot of their pricing models when it comes to their packs, uh, even the amount of packs and the separation of the amounts are ripped right out of Hearthstone. The way the disenchanting and such works straight out of Hearthstone. Even a lot of the character abilities are the same exact things as Hearthstone, just renamed and kind of adapted to the overall gameplay style of Duelist. The thing is, a bunch of that stuff is actually pulled from Magic the Gathering on, on Hearthstone's part. So, you know, someone's implementing something inspired by something else at all times. Don't worry about it. All I'm saying is, Hearthstone got that stuff right. That was probably the, the, the thing that Hearthstone got perfectly. Is the, Their pricing model is very well made and reasonable for what it is. Their arena system is set up as as, it, as intended and it works. Uh, the disenchanting system is well made as well and makes sense and it works. That's the stuff that you should be implementing. That's the stuff that they took into Duelist and they built their game around. And they left all the RNG and the luck stuff out, which we'll get to. We'll talk about that right now, actually. 
One thing is that the Hearthstone is, is annoying and I, I personally hate and I know a lot of people hate it. And it's one of the biggest complaints about Hearthstone is the luck in the RNG components. Luck can't be helped. That's going to be part of all collectible card games or trading card games or card games in general. And it's here in Duelist as well. But Duelist does something that's awesome. They have this replace mechanic when you're actually playing the game. You can literally take one of your cards and just replace it. You can be like, I don't want this card. It sucks. Just drag and drop it. And it's replaced them. It lets you kind of counter the whole, you know, Magic the Gathering problem that you would get where it's like all I have is mana in my hand or all I got is cards in my hand but no mana. And the Hearthstone problem which is, you know, I know I have cards in here that can work for me right now that I can really control the board or do something but I'm just not getting them. I'm getting everything that I don't need. I'm holding everything I don't need in my hand. All I need is this one card and I just can't get it. This replace mechanic really helps you get that one card or increases your chance of getting that one card and it also even falls into a skill based mechanic where if, if say for instance you have 20 cards left you have four cards in hand you want to replace one card for another card you know you have three of that card that you're looking for in the deck what is the percentage or the chance of you getting that card because you haven't drawn into it yet so if i drop this one am i going to get it and sometimes you do and it feels like you're breaking the rules when you do it and that's awesome like when when i predict it's like i, I think i'm going to get the card i need am i going to get it replace i got it i'm a genius i should i should go work for nasa or something because i'm i'm a fucking scientist now like it feels freaking awesome i don't know the replace mechanic is awesome, really counters out a lot of this luck uh, problematic crap that you get from like Hearthstone and even a little bit in, in Magic the Gathering. The RNG. This game has very little RNG, almost none. I would say 95 to 98%-ish, has, uh, it has little to no RNG at all. Um, unless you're talking about like opening up packs and yeah, I mean that's going to be RNG naturally. But I mean when it actually comes to the gameplay, very little RNG. Very few exceptions, though there are some exceptions where um, it's like, there, there's a card, I can't remember the exact card, maybe I can throw it up on screen, but it's something like, uh, it'll summon a copy of itself around an adjacent position or a random adjacent position. Um, that is, even then, yeah, that's RNG for sure, but even then, it's almost strategic in a way. Whereas in Hearthstone, you have a card like Brawl or Implosion. Brawl is just... At certain point, if he fills up the board, I'm just going to throw this card out there and then just straight up pray. I am literally going to pray that it leaves the weakest card on his side or at least one of my cards, hopefully. Implosion, just shoot one of them and I hope it does the most damage and gives me the most imps. Like, it's it's just straight up throw it out there and, and pray to the freaking RNG gods to give you the best possible results. Here, not so much the case. Yeah, it's going to summon on an adjacent spot, but the thing is, or a random around the spot, around the creature that you're going to throw it out on, but the thing is, it can't be summoned onto a place where there's already something on it. If there's already a creature on a tile or, or a general or something on a tile, you can actually position yourself in a position where you have people or other cards around you and then try and throw this card on there so it increases the chances of it dropping on a position that is more advantageous for you and a more predictable spot and then thus causing yeah there's rng but now it's almost strategic you're almost being strategic with the rng i don't know i think that's freaking awesome the lack of is really good but even when there is rng i feel like it's a strategic answer to it two crucial problems with collectible card games or TCGs in general that I feel they did a very good job of kind of counteracting or kind of softening the blow for which is I don't know I, I, I really enjoy it. The overall game though like we said is a card game at its foundation but there's a lot more going on as you can see in the footage there is a grid almost like a chessboard in a way and the position of where you stand and how you react changes how you play. So you can't just go out and throw your cards out randomly just hoping for stuff to happen. Your position actually matters. And sometimes you'll find yourself getting locked in or you'll even find situations where you're locking your opponent in using their own creatures or your own creatures blocking you in. You have to like move creatures out and then move your general out to not get lethal. It's, I don't know, it's freaking sweet. I, I really like this mechanic. I really enjoy this tactical kind of turn-based card game where it's like you have the cards and you can they become creatures and it's cool being able to see it you know when you can see the card and you're like oh that's a cool card and you drag and drop it and then all of a sudden it's like summon like it's in Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day like imagine if this game came out back when Yu-Gi-Oh was popular oh my god it would be so cool as little like young me would have loved I mean I love this game now 
because I haven't really aged mentally since then. But man, little me would have loved this game. Just being like, oh my god, I could see the monster and it's like moving. Oh, freaking sweet. I would have loved Songhai too. I'd have been so cheese. Actually, I love Songhai now too. <laughs> what can I say? Speaking of Songhai, one of the factions, so everything's split up into different factions. It's similar to almost uh, the colors or the mana colors of Magic the Gathering, like planes and, and islands and stuff. And also very reminiscent of the classes or heroes in Hearthstone, where you have warrior, mage, and stuff. In Duelist, it's split along factions. You have different factions. And then within that, they all have different generals, too. But they only have one general at the time, or currently, they only have one general. In the future, they do have plans of releasing new generals. As of right now, the generals only really have... They're just really a skin. They, they, they let you play cards from that faction, or cards representing that faction, and then the general themselves is just a representation. You know, they, they all do 2-2 two, two damage. They all have 25 health. There isn't like a special like armor up ability for like one of the factions to remember it's similar to like the warrior and her there's nothing like that yet who knows what we'll get in the future but currently they're just representation the differentiation between the factions are within the cards that they have within that faction the same way that in hearthstone for like a warrior you have the warrior specific cards and the mages have their you know specific cards and so on and so forth very cool very well done all the factions are very distinct too that's what i like a lot about it vitruvian is this weird kind of arch type. I feel like Magmar can be like this really controly, weird class where the general can all of a sudden one shot you out of nowhere and it's like, where that? How do you do that? <laughs> right? And it's like you have Liner that are that is kind of like a hybrid, but they can they have this huge healing capability, like the paladin. There they are the paladin. They are the paladins of this game for sure. And it's like they have this aggro build and they have like this control build. And they have this there's variation still, but it's like they they're distinct. Songhai is the red deck wins, you know, Magic the Gathering, they are the red, they, they are the mountain, you know, and it's like, they got the burn fire spells, they got all the spell slinging abilities, they have the backstab, which is basically like the super aggro build, they have all, I know, it's cool, like, it, the separation of the factions and the generals within that is cool, and then having them all animated and shot, I, I think this game's sweet, I don't know about you guys, I think it's awesome. So in closing and overall opinion and thought of the game is, I think it's quite excellent. This is one of those games that the moment I kind of started playing and getting a hang of, I, I felt I was just, it, it, it's nice having a game to improve in, you know what I mean? It's nice having something that you can play and you consistently see improvement. You can see yourself getting better and you, you make these mistakes that you know that months down the line you're going to look back at and be like, I can't believe... I let myself make that mistake, like, I can't believe I did that, you know? Where it's like, you, you, you see yourself as a noob, and you can see yourself as a better player down the line, and you know that's gonna happen eventually. Eventually, you're just gonna kinda click in and be respectably decent at the game, if anything, or good, and it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's nice having a game that I have to learn again, you know? It's not just another shooter, it's not just another card game, it's something new, it's something special, it's something finally different in the industry where I feel it's so, con like, the, the current industry when it comes to gaming is so shitty. Like, honestly, it's just another shooter or another MOBA or another MOBA-esque shooter. Like, how many Overwatch-type games are coming out right now? Nothing against Overwatch, nothing against those style of games, but, like... I kind of feel like enough is enough, like why is there a clone of the same thing over and over again, you know, and finally here we have Duelist, which is very similar to Hearthstone, very similar, sure, to Magic the Gathering and all that, and you can tell inspiration was pulled from different places, but at the end of the day, they kind of made their own thing, they made something special and cool and different with excellent art and foundations for an excellent story. And it's skill based, and it's 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 not like a money grab, and it's just, I don't know, it's just nice. It feels it's it's nice looking at this game. It's nice playing this game. I want it to be successful. It's one of those games that I see, and I'm like, good job for doing something different for once. You know, doing something a little out of the ordinary, doing something that's not just another copy and paste kind of crappy bullshit thing you know that that everyone else is doing the entire other side of the industry is doing this just copy and paste the same old thing freaking battleborn overwatch paladins 
and then you got all the Call of Duty type games and the 15 MOBAs that are coming out. And even when it comes to the card game space, you got all these other card games that are really just variations of Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering. And it's like, here we finally got something solid, you know, solid for once. Something that I can represent and be like, yeah, this game, man, this right here, Duelist. That's what I like. And that alone makes me just want to rep it. I am going to play this game consistently from now on. There's a game I play. There's a game I represent. I love it. I wish I could make more videos on it, but I suck. If I ever decide to play it, like, if, if I ever get good at it, I swear to God, I'll make more videos. I do have some overall kind of talking videos, like little discussion type videos like this that I want to drop real soon for Duelist. But when it comes to gameplay or tips and tricks, I am not the person to, to go for that. I, I oh God, I hate how much I suck at it because I want to be so good, but I'm so stupid. It's, oh, I don't know. I'm sure there's a bunch of people having the exact same problem. It's something new, though. You, should, you shouldn't be too down about that. That's the thing I tell myself is that we haven't really seen this yet. This combination of card game plus, uh, you know, turn-based strategy type thing. So it's, it's hard for a lot of people to wrap their head around, and it's and it's shitty when you have these guys on Reddit and stuff going on about, I just got to S rank in three days, it's like, ah, I don't know, I hate it. <laughs> I freaking hate it when I see that shit. When it's like, oh, I'm still stuck at rank 23 because I'm stupid, dur, ah, whatever. Excellent game. I went, I went way off topic at the end there, but I love the game, I think it's excellent. This is the game I'm going to be dropping, you know, little bits of cash in now that I kind of have my collection finished in uh, in Hearthstone and if they do release new uh, sets and stuff which of course they will uh, I, I'll keep it up to date and Hearthstone's still a, a game a card game that I love and it's something I will consistently play same with Magic the Gathering but Duelist has been added to that so yeah I'm repping Duelist I'm gonna try and improve as much as I can I'm gonna be throwing in a little bit of cash here and there to kind of help out the, the you know the, the company the counterplay games kind of help them out uh, show them that I support the game, show them that I like the game, and just so I can get some cards so I'm not getting pooped on consistently. If I can't win with strategy, I'll win with money. Darkster out. Peace.